Welcome to SOLIDWORKS Tutorials with Ryan where teaching is not boring and learning is easy. Now I know speed isn't everything but it's kind of everything as long as you know what you're doing. For example here I have no idea what I'm doing. Sit tight because you're about to be exposed to my personal top 10 habits that enables me to model faster than you. <laughs> Just kidding I don't need these 10 habits to be faster than you. <laughs> okay it's enough I've got it out of my system. I'm about to convert you to a faster version of yourself in SOLIDWORKS and give you one good news at the end, so let's go. How to draw efficiently and fast. For this tip, I'm going to give you 10 habits I have built that helps me finish a model ahead of others. This might sound like a bonus to you, but if you're going to take any of the official SOLIDWORKS exams, that is CSWA or CSWP and others, time is not on your side and you have to save every second you can. So it becomes mandatory if you're going to become good enough to pass those tests and get certified. Habit number one, mouse gestures. It took me years until I stumbled upon mouse gestures and I always ignored it and assumed it was for professionals. No, it's for everyone and the sooner you start using it, the sooner it becomes second nature to you. Mouse gestures are shortcut boxes that you can reach by certain movements of your mouse. Simply hold right click on your mouse and slightly move your mouse to the sides. You will see this will pop up that on default has four tools. Moving my mouse to either of these directions will activate the tool on that wheel. There are four wheels that you can have in four different modes. More Moreover, you could and should customize the number of tools on these wheels and the tools itself. Go to customize and to mouse gestures tab. These are the four wheels in different situations. Part, assembly, drawing, and sketch. So you know if you're creating a technical drawing, your mouse wheel will grant you access to this wheel and similarly in the assembly mode to this one. I personally mostly use that in sketch and assembly mode. In addition to that, I have set a number of tools on each wheel to 8. You could go up to as many as 12 but I find that unnecessary for two reasons. You don't have that many common tools that you want to pack in the wheels because you will only remember the location of the tools you use on a regular basis and if you put a tool that you use once in two months you won't remember its gesture and that beats the point. And secondly having 12 tools requires a much finer hand movement to hit those tools right and that is something I don't want to try a couple of times till I get it right because then again I end up wasting more time and I will be better off finding that tool from the menu here. Because the whole point of using mouse gestures is to model faster. Habit number two, line to arc change. Line and arcs are two of the most basic tools that you will need in 80% of your modelings. Most base sketches contain a bunch of them. You will be much faster drawing your sketch if you could switch between line and arc back and forth through this technique. When using line tool, you click for the first time, you set the first point. Then you set the second point. At this time, you have the option to switch your tool to arc by moving the mouse cursor away by bringing it back to the last point point you set until you see this small yellow square around the point. Now moving your mouse away again, you see that the line is now turned into a tangential arc. Click and you are back to line again. Having said that, there are two caveats to this method. You can only switch from line to arc and not the other way around. Not until you create the arc because going back to this point won't switch arc to line. The second caveat is the artifact that sometimes happens if you move your mouse away too fast or too slow then your line will turn into an arc but it will not be a tangential one. In that case you must press escape to exit the activated tool and draw it again. Which brings me to my habit number three, keep your left hand on escape key at all times during sketching. This is the fastest and most useful shortcut in SOLIDWORKS to get you out of any active sketch and feature. Not having escape in my designing would increase my sketching up to 20% minimum. Make sure to maintain this posture with your keyboard during your sketching and in SOLIDWORKS. Also an advanced tip for those who also work with Photoshop, depending on the version of your SOLIDWORKS or Photoshop, your escape key might not work if you have Photoshop open in the background. Habit number four, drawing on the center of the origin. This tip is what separates you from your competition and makes you be one step ahead of them at all times. Most beginners and even some tutors take the coordinate system as a solid law to put the corner of your rectangle on, in my opinion, it puts you in a huge disadvantage. Instead of drawing your rectangle like this, make sure to put the coordinate system in the center of your drawing, whenever possible, of course. For different type of sketches, there are different
different methods. Polygons, circles, and ellipses are easy. You set the first center point on the coordinate system. Rectangles are a bit more tricky. If you work with the default rectangle option, corner rectangle, then set the first point here instead of fixing it on the coordinate system. At this point, you can either draw a center line from corner to corner, right click on the center line, select the midpoint, hold the control key, and select the coordinate system and assign a coincident relation to that, or the easier way would be to use center rectangle. The reason I'm telling you to put your rectangle on the center of your drawing plane will be clear to you in future steps. When you are going to mirror your part or assemble it or need a centered plane that cuts your part in half, having the sketch in the middle will give you the luxury of having at least two of the three default planes exactly in the middle of your part, which can be used for many features without the need of creating a custom plane if you're going to need one, which you will if the item you're modeling is complicated enough. I can't stress that enough how much time it can save you and how important it is for beginners just like yourself to get acquainted with the coordinate system and use the fundamentals of SolidWorks the way they were intended to be used. Habit number five is complementary to habit number four. In the previous tip, I told you to place the coordinate system on the center of your sketch to have two of the three default planes on the center of your component. In this tip, I recommend you to extrude your sketch mid-plane unless you can. So you will have all three planes on the center of your part. Looking at the cross-sectional view, assigning symmetry, mirroring, and many of the other features on SolidWorks will depend on having a plane on the center of your part, and having three will give you a flexibility to choose instead of being limited or obliged to customize a new one and spend another five minutes of your time. When I took the CSWP for the first time, I was begging for extra 30 seconds. So five minutes in that exam is pure gold. Habit number six, undo trim. You know already about trim entities. This is a tool that allows you to trim your messy sketch and clean it how you want it. This tool is set to power trim on default and I recommend you not to change that as this is sufficient for almost all situations. However, the tricky thing with this mode is when you make a mistake and trim an entity that is not supposed to be trimmed, most beginners and up to many professionals that I've seen sigh really loud and control Z the whole thing and start over. But there is no need for that. You can undo your last trim and walk it back backwards to the start by simply moving your mouse cursor over this red rectangle to make the last trim appear and keep doing it until everything is back to normal. Needless to say that you should not let go of your left click otherwise it's too late and you do have to control Z and start from the top. Habit number seven, in addition to a drawing on a plane, you can also draw on a flat surface on the model. Make no mistake, this is not a flat surface. This is. To make sure which surface is flat and how you can start drawing your 2D sketch on it, simply left click on the surface in question and look in the pop-up box here next to your mouse cursor if you see this option, sketch. Then your surface was flat and by clicking on this option, you can activate the sketching mode on that surface and start drawing on it. If you do not see it, then your surface is not flat and activating the sketching mode is a technique for professionals and 3D sketches, which is another topic. Habit number eight, editing sketch patterns. Unlike feature patterns that will be added to the design tree here and make it easy for you to edit them, sketch patterns, either linear or circular, are not added to the tree, making the process of changing them a nightmare for beginners and a don't know for professionals. Most of them end up deleting the whole thing and start again from the top. But if you click on one of the instances you created using the pattern, you will see the sketch pattern in their existing relation right here. Right click on that will allow you to edit that easy. Habit number nine, reusing your sketch. Learning this technique is crucial to pass your certification exam and it is very useful in your daily modeling too. When you create a 3D component out of your 2D sketch, that sketch will be hid on the design tree under your feature you assign to it, but it can be reused. For example, in this case, I don't need to keep drawing new circles and assign features to them one by one. I can reuse the initial sketch by opening the feature combo on the top and selecting it by a simple left click. Now going to the features tab, I can use a different tool and create a different geometry out of the same initial sketch. Note that changing the sketch on one of these features will result in changing the others too, as they share this sketch together. Habit number 10, swept bus circular profile. This technique may not be available in older versions of SOLIDWORKS, but in recent versions, you do not need to draw a profile for swept bus 
if your profile is going to be circular. This is a blessing. This will save you a huge amount of time and complication of creating a new plane, drawing a circle, placing it on the center of your path perpendicularly, and so on. You can simply check circular profile here and define its diameter. Now these were my 10 habits and strategies for speed drawing. Alright guys, I hope you liked this video. Did you know I took these 10 habits out of my old webinar? Because I replaced it with a new one for you today. So if you still haven't watched my webinar, go watch it right now because if you are a beginner, you are going to love it. If you are an intermediate or above, you still want to watch it because along with the webinar, I am going to send a series of free mini courses to the emails of those who sign up. All right, I will see you next Tuesday. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more. Pow. I, I don't say the pow. I should have not said the pow.